Hey YouTube. So I'm in the middle of the pureed stage, stage four for me, and um, a lot of people said this is the toughest stage for them. So what I wanted to do was share a little bit about some of the things that have gotten me through this stage and have, uh, have helped me out and hopefully uh, they help some of you out. Little tips and tricks we've learned along the way. So I think the most important thing that uh, I love, these are a few of my favorite things, my water bottle. I have a couple of these. This one has some Crystal Light lemonade in it. Um, definitely get some water bottles um, or some glass you can carry around. This is nice. It's got a you know little screw top lid on it. Keeps the water in there. Has nice little markings on the side so you know how much you're drinking. Can't imagine life without those. This little baby, my Hamilton Beach personal blender. Um, just a great tool to have. Make smoothies right out of the container. A um, little protein powder, a little bit of ice, a um, little bit of milk or almond milk or something, and voila, you got your protein drink. Easy to use. Um, I don't have it with me, but I have a tiny little ice cube maker. It makes ice cubes that are the size of, you know, just a tiny little square. Blends up nice in these things. This is great. Definitely get one of these. If you don't have one, um, highly recommend it. This is a plastic container from a sugar-free Jell-O. Um, save them. If you have these, save them because they're a great portion size indicator for you. You know, you ballpark your meal is going to be about halfway, about two ounces. This is, holds, I think, four ounces of Jell-O. So about halfway is two ounces of whatever mushy food you're going to be on. Cheap, they're easy. You can bring them with you. They're, they're pretty decent. I like them. The last non-food item I wanted to share, I think, is this which a friend of mine told me about on one of the forums. This is a Mr. Coffee, but I'm sure there's other ones too. It's a coffee cup warmer, all right? Um, you're not going to be needing this too much for your coffee. You're probably gonna be able to drink your coffee while it's hot, but for food, um, I don't know about you, but I, I hate cold scrambled eggs, um, kind of gross. So this is nice. You just turn it on, you put your plate on it you, while you're cooking your eggs, the plate gets warm, you put the eggs on it and you can nibble at those eggs for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and they're gonna stay nice and warm. Um, definitely recommend you get one of these. It was like 10 bucks or something at Bed Bath & Beyond or someplace like that. Walmart even probably has them. Um, definitely recommend this. It fits right on the table. It's got a super long cord. Um, doesn't get so hot you got to worry about a fire hazard with it, but it's, it's just really nice to have this nice little luxury. So now the food. Mushy food. So I was cleared to eat cottage cheese, uh, scrambled eggs, ricotta, yogurt, um, mushy tuna, things that are, have the consistency of, of all that. And um, I found a couple things that I've really grown to like. Number one, ricotta. This is fat-free ricotta, Calabro. I don't really care what brand it is. This has been the brand I had. Um, this is 16 ounces, so this is the equivalent of like eight meals, believe it or not. Um, it's. I really have grown to like it. If you don't usually just eat ricotta except for in lasagna, give it a shot. It's not bad. A uh, little bit of spray butter on it, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, warmed up. It's pretty tasty. Um, the other little nice trick about ricotta that I found is that you take uh, two ounces of ricotta and you add in a couple Splenda packets and you add in some of the next thing I'm gonna talk about, which is extract, a couple drops of almond extract, a couple things of Splenda and some ricotta, put it in the fridge or freezer and you got yourself like the inside of a cannoli and it tastes phenomenal. Has almost no carbs and um, tastes great. So it's a great dessert if you're trying to get a little bit more protein in. Um, ricotta has like six ounces of protein or six grams of protein rather in about a serving. So it's a decent little protein source for you and it really just tastes fantastic and uh, certainly is mushy and just has a good taste. So extracts, um, talked about those protein drinks. They're, they're, they're fine, I mean, they're not great, but they're not terrible either. But I found a couple things that really mix them up a lot. Mint extract, a couple drops of this into your chocolate protein drink. Tastes really good. Same thing with vanilla. Um, almond extract, really good with chocolate or vanilla. Um, I found banana extract. I found coffee extract. And, you know, yeah, the ingredients are alcohol, but you're adding literally two or three drops to what you're doing. So I think there's a minimal um, effect and nutritionally on it. It just adds a lot of flavor. And I definitely recommend if you're, if you're doing protein drinks and you're really sort of sick of them, which I see a lot of people posting on forums that they are, totally get that. Um, a little extract mixes it up a little bit. It's pretty nice. And then my secret weapon. So this is probably not an approved food, um, but uh, it certainly is approved in terms of texture. Um, been craving meat a little bit. Not craving in the sense, oh, I gotta have meat, but I was getting kind of sick of the ricotta, kind of sick of the cottage cheese. Um, 
So I saw online, someone said, well, I like these Underwood things. I really hadn't even heard about these since I was a kid. I think my mom used to get these once in a while. So there are these things, Underwood roast beef spread, Underwood chicken spread, and Underwood deviled ham spread. Um, if you don't like the idea of throwing a piece of chicken in the blender, the puree, and if you don't like the idea of eating baby food, I highly recommend these. Actually, they're, they're really tasty. Um, this is their four and a quarter ounces each, so you have about half a can for your meal. Um, good source of protein. I think they've got 11, eight grams, seven grams, eight grams of protein per serving. There's two servings in each one of these. So, you know, really good source of protein, and it just tastes good. It's got flavoring and seasoning in it. It's a little higher in fat than the baby food and, and everything else you're gonna be eating, but you know, what the hell, you're on the pureed food stage. It's like, you know, probably the toughest stage. You might as well enjoy it a little bit. Um, the roast beef is really good. Uh, chicken's fine, I was a little chickened out. And uh, the deviled ham is pretty tasty. Little known trivia fact, the oldest food trademark in the United States of America. This stuff has been made since the early 1800s. Um, they used it in the Civil War. Um, it's, it's not bad, I gotta tell you. Even after I go to regular food, I, I might be having this as a regular staple of my diet. Um, not uh, not every day, because like I said, it is a little higher in fat, but certainly a couple times a week, it's a really nice treat. So those are a few of my favorite things. Um, uh, the ricotta has been great. I've really been doing that a lot. Cottage cheese is good, but these Underwood things, if you're looking for meat alternatives, um, these, these are good ones to have. So anyway, that's a few of my uh, tricks and tips for the pureed stage. Good luck to everyone who's doing it. Um, I see more people complaining about that stage than any other stage, I think, on message boards. Um, when I get to full food, I think I'm going to have probably, uh, you know, some aversions like everyone does, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to fall back on some of the things I've learned in this stage that I've grown to like. So hopefully that was useful to people. If you have any other tips or things you want to pass along, please feel free to um, post them below in comments or send to me. Oh, oh, one more. I forgot. Refried beans. Fat-free refried beans. Um, refried beans with a little bit of reduced fat cheddar on top and uh, maybe a little, even a little uh, fat-free sour cream on the side or a little salsa sort of liquid mixed in. Uh, I've been adding barbecue spice rub to the refried beans. Mixes it up a little bit. They don't have a ton of protein, believe it or not. They're good for fiber, not great for protein. But you can even add a, a scoop of or a tiny little spoonful of the unflavored protein powder and I'm sure it's fine. I don't really care for the unflavored that much, but for what it is, it's fine. So anyway, sorry about the refried bean omission, the great refried bean omission of 2013. Um, good luck to everyone on the protein um, on this pureed stage. It's, uh, you, you'll get through it and we'll all get through it together and uh, move on to solid food. But hopefully the little tips and tricks help people and uh, we'll follow up in about two weeks when I'm on solids and we'll see if I have any other ones I can share with you. So thanks a lot for watching.